I'm holding the Ripstick, an overspeed training system. I'm a firm believer in overspeed training as a way to pick up club speed. Today, you're gonna find out just exactly how club speed influences performance. There we go. Oh boy. Hey golfers, I'm Thomas Campbell, Director of Instruction at Swing Lab Performance Golf. Today I'm joined by fellow teaching professional Ian McKenzie Olson, and today we're going to be discussing club speed and how it really influences performance. Ian, you got some speed, right? Yes, I do. Yeah, I've, I've seen you hit some shots. You've gotten upwards of 120 miles an hour, which I'm very jealous of. However, I've been kind of pushing to try and gain some speed, and I've used overspeed training protocol, protocols in the past. I've used super speed. I've used ripstick. We've partnered with Ripstick, um, so Ripstick's a great product, great Minnesota product. So if you want to find out more about Ripstick, check out our description here. Um, we also were about to offer a promotion for you to get this product at a discounted rate. But coming back to overspeed training and, and club speed, let's face it, club speed is potential distance. If you're not still fine in the middle of the club face, it really doesn't matter, but it is potential distance. It's a way to pick up some distance. So for today's test, Ian, I'm gonna challenge you. I'm gonna challenge you to hit five different speed categories. 80 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour, 110, and then 120. We're just gonna compare and see just exactly how the performance just changes, how much further you hit the ball for maybe every 10 miles an hour, and how much it really influences distance with your particular gamer. First off, I want you to tell me, what driver are you playing, and do you know what specs you're playing? Yeah, so I play the TaylorMade Stealth. Um, it's a nine degree head, but I have it one notch lower, and I have the Ventus Black Shaft, 70 grams, extra stiff. Yeah, so his driver, we're not going to modify any specs with it. We're just gonna have him hit at that, basically 8.75 degrees aloft. I'm gonna win the bet at the faster club speed because that's what he's been fit for. It's gonna be more optimal than, say, 80 miles an hour. I'm probably gonna guess it's gonna be you're gonna have a hard time getting the ball to stay in the air, only swinging 80 miles an hour. So that's why it's really important to definitely pay attention to your numbers and get fit for your driver based on what your club speed is and just don't buy your driver off the rack. Um, so, exciting test. Ian, let's get after it. All right, let's do it. Okay, Ian, I'm gonna get you to kind of gradually work your way up to a faster club speed. So I'm gonna get you to start, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly 80 miles an hour. I'd say in the 80 mile an hour category would be a good area to be, and we'll try and go in 10 mile an hour increments. So let's hit five shots for about, around about 80 miles an hour and see what happens. Okay. Look at that smash factor, 151. <laughs> <laughs> A worm burner. That thing's like coming down what, as soon as you hit it. There's no chance to peak. Only, only 15 feet in the air. It's crazy. That was a little higher. I don't know if you hit that one as solid though. Okay, so if we look here, 82 two miles an hour on the club speed. Ball speed one, 22.5, one smash factor, 149. It's pretty good numbers, right? Yeah. 149, you can't go wrong with that. So because you don't have that much speed, you check out your launch angle and the spin. 8.2, 1.775 on the spin rate. Carry 135 going 191. Um, your, your height was 21 feet in the air and your landing angle was 14 degrees. Typically in a driver fitting, I'm always looking at 30 to 40 degrees for the landing angle. So we know if you're gonna be swinging at 82 miles an hour, we need to probably give you a lot more loft on your driver. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna be the, the important thing. Or find a way out to improve someone's you know, golf swing, improve their attack angle somehow. Wanted to throw in the, the slower speed just so we could get a wide range and show the numbers essentially. Okay, so let's move on, 90 miles an hour. That was pretty good. That was money, except it was a little fast. Just a, I mean, it's in the 90 mile an hour category. It's 90, a little off the heel. Oh, 
Oops. <laughs> That'd be good for the next tag. Gosh. <laughs> it's difficult. Your averages are good. That's all I care about. <laughs> okay, so this is hard, right? This is quite really hard to change out the, the, the club speed. On average, you see your club speed, you picked up 10 miles an hour. That's all I was asking from you. So you went from 82.1 to 92.0. We know the smash factor, about the same, 149, 148. You can see that your launch angle is still about the same. Spin went up a little bit. So generally, if you increase your club speed, more chance for that ball to spin. Makes sense. Carry distance went up by, what was that, 50 yards? It's quite an increase, right? Yeah. Quite an increase. Tack angle didn't really kind of change much there either. Club path. Face angle numbers, about the same as what we're seeing here before, same amount of curve. This is where we start to see the ball to rise because of that spin. So we started out at, at 21 feet. Now we're at 33 feet in the air. So landing angle went from 14 to 18. Still not even close to optimal with your particular driver, mm -hmm. but we, we, we're trending in the right direction. So once again, there's a reason why you probably got fit for that particular driver at that particular setting. Could you swing a certain way? Yep. Okay. 100 miles an hour. Let's see it. Whoops. <laughs> 106. That's all right. Yeah, I guess it wasn't too bad. I thought it was a little faster. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was a little fast. That one's going to be pretty close. You're pretty good. Ian, tell me how'd that feel? Um, we're working in the right direction. It's becoming a little bit more comfortable, but uh, still, still a little bit uncomfortable for, you know, about, about 20 miles per hour less than I would say my stock drive is. Yeah, just working on like, like a nice smooth tempo, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, so once again, we can see ball speed, smash factor, you know, pretty, pretty similar across the board, 149 smash, that hasn't changed. Your launch really hasn't changed there on that. We'll notice the spin rate did drop just a touch. I'm mean, gonna guess you got a couple off the toe on mm -hmm. those. And there was one that kind of was a little bit more kind of lower off the toe there. So I was a little surprised the spin rate didn't go up anymore, but I think it gradually will go up once we get 110, 120, and maybe we'll test you to see how fast you can get. Um, but your tech angle, your path numbers, you're, they're all pretty similar. Um, but what we do see is that landing angle and that height still just gradually starting to kind of work its way up. So now is probably where we're going to start to see probably you getting closer to what's kind of more kind of comfortable for you. Mm -hmm. So now that's C 110. I did hit that one a little bit high on the face. That's why the spin. Yeah, so your, your your spin and height still being pretty low all the way through here. Hundred and ten. All right, so we're definitely training closer to what is considered a little more optimal. And I say that because we're looking at this, this 23rd shot right here. You'll notice landing angle, I mentioned earlier, 30 to 40 degrees is considered kind of more optimal there for get your most optimal carry and total distance out of your driver. So this particular shot here was closer to what's considered more optimal. But you can see how these numbers are just slowly climbing. Now, we, we was, we're earlier we were like 10 to 20, you know, then we were like 15 to 25, and now, now we're throwing in a couple of 30s there too. So we're trending closer to what's more optimal. Your smash factor number hasn't changed at all. Those numbers there are still the same. Um, launch was just a touch higher, and now we're seeing just a little bit more spin, which is kind of closer to more kind of optimal here. Um, you normally, you said you normally swing right, right around about 120-ish yep. normally for your club speed, so that should be a little bit closer. The one thing I find interesting was the, just the, this recent jump. You went from 37 to 65 feet in the air. 
So I'm curious now to see once we go to 120, just see what happens to your landing angle and your height. That one sounded pretty good. Seventy-five ball speed. There you go. That was better. That'll play. All right, you got one more swing. You got to try and get your average to one twenty. You're at one nineteen point two. You got to give us about one hundred and twenty-three on this one. Good ball speed. There you go. Look at that, 120 point, I told you, you get to 123 and you got 120.0 on average. Well in, 120 on the dot, pretty good, 120.0, so very robotic testing there. What we'll notice here is your smash factor number, um, you can see here, you dropped just a touch, 147, so as we increase our speed, it's a little harder to hit in the middle of the face. However, you'll definitely notice that your spin, your launch, and then your, your carry distance and total numbers went up. I mentioned earlier, landing angle, 30 to 40 degrees is kind of optimal. So we can see here 34.7 with your driver now. So we've seen a big, big increase in getting closer to 100 feet in the air overall. I do want to bring up here just kind of some TrackMan optimizer numbers. So I think, it, I think this is a great way to explain to everyone just kind of what is going to be optimal for you know, what particular club you're hitting. And I'm going to start at 80 miles an hour. So we take a look here, 80 miles an hour, you can see the blue area here, this is kind of the optimal range. We know when you're swinging 80 miles an hour with an 8.75 degree driver, your spin loft, your launch angle, your spin, and your height is going to be way too low. So if you're going to swing at this speed, we need to have probably 13 degrees loft on your driver, honestly. Um, but you'll notice because you just have so little loft on the driver, you're actually outperforming on ball speed. But it really, you're not getting any gains because the ball's not staying in the air to get the optimal carry distance. It starts to gradually go up. So you can see here, 90 miles an hour starts to kind of go up, you know, 33 feet in the air, 137 feet in the air, 110 now, 65 feet in the air. We notice now we're getting kind of closer over as optimal. And then we start seeing some getting closer to these blue numbers. If you take a look here, what's interesting though, the ball speed, you actually went, fell under what's optimal for the first time. The faster you swing, the harder it is to hit in the middle of the club face. I gotta you know, remind you, obviously it's middle of February right now when we're shooting this video. So you probably haven't done a lot of golf living in Minnesota here, so you're probably not in peak form, and especially after swinging at 80, 90, 100, 110 to try and challenge you a little bit. But you definitely notice that we lose a little bit of ball speed but you'll notice these numbers here are kind of considered more, more optimal overall as we're moving up the, the board. But yeah, so 120 miles an hour, we're getting closer to what's optimal. I want to see now if you can give us just a little bit extra to see what else is left in the tank. Both speed over 180, I love that. A little harder to um, match up your, your path and face angle, but also it's a little harder if you get a little bit offline, don't quite catch in the middle of the club face. Yeah. That's when you're going to get punished. You'll notice your face to path is only negative 2.6 there, mm -hmm. but you created 162 feet of curve on that shot, probably just because you got a little bit on the toe yeah. and it just kept going. There we go. Oh boy. That's pretty optimal. That's, that is pretty optimal, right? <laughs> 2400, I know you mentioned you liked your spin being around about 2400. Yeah. 346.6. Might be one of your straighter ones you've hit too. Yeah. Pretty good. I'm 26.6. All right, so I want to take a look at these trends. Let's just kind of take a look here at the height and the landing angle. We'll notice the more speed that you generate, the higher that landing angle gets in degrees, the higher the height gets. So now you're 125 feet. You just added another 28 feet just by swinging five miles an hour faster.
So now we're starting to see that spin go up. Now you're at 2,800 on the spin. Yeah, it, the faster you, you swing, the more potential distance you can generate. Mm -hmm. But you also got to keep in mind that distance versus dispersion debate, right? Mm -hmm. End of the day, we want to be in the fairway. We don't want to be having to chip out sideways. Yes, there's a theory of the, the bomb and gouge out there as well. But for the most part, what you'll find right here, when you're max speed versus 120, you actually lost five yards on average. Yes, you hit that one 346 yards, but you'll notice you really didn't really gain much more by swinging faster at the end. So the gains are definitely be there to be made. You know, we, we're seeing here is we're swinging 80, 90, 110, 120 miles an hour. We're seeing between 30 and 50 yards per 10 miles an hour. Pretty impressive. And we can see here where your biggest gain was actually, I believe it was right around, a, and it's, your, and your carry distance was here going from 135 to 185. So you picked up 50, mile, 50 yards in carry distance. Mm -hmm. But then you'll notice it maybe starts to tighten up a little bit at the end. So you kind of reached what is kind of considered kind of the, the optimal. That's when you might even need less loft on your driver. So if we had put your driver maybe at six or seven degrees, that's when we can keep that spin rate down. And that's when the ball can probably go far, really far on those good strikes, but just know we catch a little on the toe or the heel, it's gonna go further, further offline. So distance versus dispersion debate. I'm gonna leave you with this. So I know you're like, yeah, not optimal today, right? Not everything's in the fairway. Right. You were adjusting your, I put, I put you on the spot and made you kind of adjust your club speed up and challenged you. But you'll notice obviously it trends up, up there. We could probably get rid of this one. This one here was probably kind of a little bit of an outlier. But even, even still, you'll notice you really didn't pick up too much there going from 120 to kind of your, to your max speed. Picked up five yards. End of the day, club speed is really, really important. Think of it as potential distance. The faster you swing your club, the more potential distance you have. However, there is the distance versus dispersion debate that you have to definitely pay attention to. But I do highly recommend, if you're looking for an extra little extra in your distance with your driver, not only optimize your driver based on the loft on the driver and the shaft you're playing, but also add in some overspeed training. Ripstick golf, super speed golf, whatever you're gonna choose, definitely gonna help you to increase your club speed.